All right, guys, here we are. We're jumping to 10-6. Uh, yes, this is still part of um, our unit here. And I was just looking up the name for you. Oh, yes, we call this Advanced Topics. Sorry. And to remember, a lot going on today. What else? I feel like I say that a lot. Um, but so this is part of our last unit, Parametric Equations. So here I am, me, crazy me, writing out all our notes. This actually isn't going to be a long lesson if... I just get to it here. All right, so we've been using two variables, and now we're using a third variable to represent a curve on the plane. X, Y, the point X, Y, tells you where the object has been, but not when the object was at a given point. So basically, we're looking at equations that tell us position, direction, and potentially speed at a given time. Um, so, well, what is a parametric equation? So, if f and g are continuous functions of t on an interval i, then the set of all ordered pairs, f of t comma g of t, is a plane curve c. x equals this function f of t, and y equals the function g of t. These are the parametric equations for c, the plane curve. Oh, sorry, and t is the parameter. And so this allows us, I know you're just thrilled about that, but to represent all the conics by functions. Woohoo, yippee. The advantage of sketching plane curves by um, point plotting, which is what we're going to do in a second, is that we can see how the curve is traced in the order of increasing values of t, which is called the orientation of the curve. So we're going to do that right now. All right. So number one, sketch the graph of the curve given by x equals 2t and y equals t squared plus 1 on the interval negative 2 to 5 inclusive. So we're going to make a table of values and just plot the points. All right, so I don't know, I'll go like this, I guess. So I have t. So again, this negative 2 to 5, that is representing t values, just so we're clear on that. And then I'm going to have an x column and a y column because I have those two um, parametric equations. So t, it's starting at negative 2, and I'm just going to make it easy and make them integers. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wow. Classic Swanson style. I left myself a ton of room. All right. Okay, so here we go. So I'm literally just going to put negative 2 into the x equation. So when I put negative 2 in for t, I'm going to get negative 4 because it's 2 times negative 2. And then when I put negative 2 in here, that's going to be 4 uh, plus 1. That's going to be 5. Now I'll move on to negative 1. So that's going to give me negative 2. This is going to be 1 plus 1, which is uh, 2. 0, 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. When I put 1 in, 2 times 1 is 2. 1 squared plus 1 is two. I put two in. Two times two is four. Two squared is four plus one is five. Two times three is six. Three squared is nine plus one is ten. For t is four. Two times four is eight. Mm -hmm. Four squared plus one, that's going to be seventeen. And then five times two is ten. And then that will be twenty-five plus one is twenty-six. So there's my table of values, and now I'm just going to plot it. This pen so it seems like it's not going to make it. Okay, so, all right, um, my x's are going from negative 4 up to 10, and my y's are going from, what's the smallest there, 1 up to 26. So, I don't know, I can probably make it 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't think my Y, I will make it though. So I might just go by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Still kicking myself for not grabbing that graph paper when I went into work so long ago. Oh well. All right, so now we're just going to plot the X, Y point. So your first point is going to be at negative 4, 5. So negative 4, 5. That's my starting point. Next point is at negative 2, 2. Next point is at 0, 1. 
Then we get to 2, 2. And then we have 4, 5. Then we have 6. My old eyes here. 6, 10. And then we have 8, 7, 8, uh, 17. And then my last one is at 10, 26. So remember, we define the interval from negative 2 to 5 inclusive. So my graph, oh gosh, I should have done a little bit nicer, um, will look like that uh, with the two endpoints. I want to make sure that I put the arrows on. Okay, and this, indica this indicates the object's orientation as t increases from negative 2 to 5. So there is your graph. We do like you to include the arrows there. Okay, two other topics that you'll see on your homework tonight. The second one is eliminating the parameter. So sometimes we need to look at a single two-variable equation of a curve instead of the actual parametric equations. So here are some steps that I outlined for you. you if you have your parametric equation, you want to solve for t in one equation, and then substitute that t expression um, into the other equation. And then you end up with a rectangular equation, which can help us with graphing. That's kind of the point of this. Okay, so, whoops, let me just flip that over. Here we go. So number two, uh, which is what I just talked about with the elimination. So it says find an equation in x and y for the curve given by x equals, of course we're still in blurry mode, x equals 1 over the quantity t plus 1 and y equals 3t squared plus 6t plus 4 all divided by the quantity t squared plus 2t plus 1. So, like we said with our steps, we are first going to take one of our equations and solve for t. I don't know about you, but this one looks a lot easier. So let me work with that. So I will have um, xt plus x equals 1. All right. And then I'm going to subtract x. And I'm going to divide everything by x. So I end up with that there. I mean, I could write that as 1 over x minus 1 if I wanted to. All right. So now... I take that and I'm going to substitute it into, yes, doesn't this look fun? Look, I actually left myself the whole page, if you can believe it or not, um, <laughs> planning ahead. Uh, I'm going, come on and focus here. I'm going to put that in the equation for t in my y equation. All right, so I have y equals three times, doesn't this look fun? One minus x all over x squared, if you look up here and then plus 6 times the quantity of 1 minus x all over x, and then plus, what is my last one here, plus 4, yep, and then divided by 1 minus x over x quantity squared plus 2 times 1 minus x all over x plus 1. All right, so away we go. I am going to get Three. Oh gosh, you're like, please don't bore us with this. All right, so in the denominator here, we're going to get x squared. And in our numerator, we're going to get, I have to just write it, 1 minus x, I'm very visual. Okay, so we're going to get 1, and then we're going to get a negative 2x plus x squared. Here, we're going to get a 6 minus 6x all over x plus a 4. I, I mean, I, I can think ahead here. I'm going to need a common denominator. So I'm going to call it a 4x squared. And I might as well call this an x and an x squared and a squared to get a common denominator there. Okay, I mean, that, I don't know if that was the best way, but here we go. All right, so in the denominator here, we're going to get uh, 1 minus 2x plus x squared all over x squared plus 2 minus 2x all over x. But again, I'm going to need that common denominator, so I might as well do that. Plus, again, I'm going to think of the 1 and call that x squared. Actually, that should be over x squared. Whoops, sorry. You can't just throw that in there. <clears throat> Maybe you were yelling at me to fix that. Oh, God, look, I left myself plenty of room here. Okay, so up here, just to save myself some room, this is really going to be 3 minus 6x plus 3x squared. <clears throat> yeah. So let's see what happens. Um, our 6x's cancel. 
and what else do we have? So we have a negative 6x squared plus 4, that's going to be a negative 2 <coughs> plus 3, that's going to just be an x squared, and plus a 3. Okay, and down here, let's see what happens. So we have a negative 2x and a 2x. We have a negative 2x squared, an x squared, and an x squared. So all those cancel out, and I'm left with 1 over x squared. Okay, well, the x squareds cancel here in the complex fraction. So we just get x squared plus 3 all over 1, which is x squared plus 3. I really should write it very, a little bit nicer, but equals y. I didn't want to say equals equals. That wasn't very good. So I have y equals x squared plus 3. So I mentioned back in our notes there about how when we get rid of the parametric equation, it helps us with graphing. Because now I can see that this is, this is a curve uh, that's a parabola, and it opens up with a vertex at 0, 3. So it does aid us in um, graphing that. So there's a example there for you on that. And then the last thing I need to talk about is finding parametric equations for a graph. So now we'll go in the other direction. We are given the equation in x and y, and we find a parametric equation for the same curve. So now we're going to do the opposite of what we just did. So these are really two different um, questions. I guess I lied, but then after this, I'm done. So find a set of parametric equations to represent the graph given by y equals x squared plus 1 using the following. So scenario number 1, this is what you're given. You're given t equals x and y equals x squared plus 1 because we were given that. So there's really not much work to do here. All you're going to do is take your y equals equation and you're going to substitute t in for x, so I get y equals t squared plus 1. Again, it says find a set of parametric equations, so that's the y, and we also have to give the x, and we know that if t equals x, then x equals t, so there's your answer. Not much to it here, okay? And then for part b, this is your given t equals x plus 2 and y equals x squared plus 1, so again, um, we're going to substitute, and we know, therefore, that uh, x, sorry, equals t minus 2, and I can do substitution. So I will have t minus 2, quantity squared plus 1, and if I just clean that up, that's going to be t squared minus 4t plus 4 plus 1, so I have y equals t squared minus 4t uh, plus 5. And then again, because it's a parametric equation, you have to have the x one as well. And up there, we know that x equals t minus 2 from the given statement. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening.